Speaking out after surviving a shooting. Right now, we're hearing from a man recovering from his injuries after he says a bullet hit him while trying to shield his son from gunfire around 845 Sunday night. And WGN's Courtney Spinelli joins us from the South Shore neighborhood where it happened. Here at the corner of 70th and Clyde is where Donald Muhammad says he was just trying to take his son out of the car Sunday night when gunfire erupted. Just looking at the damage left behind on his car helps paint a picture of what happened here. This is an epidemic and it doesn't affect me. It affects children every day. It affects adults. It affects innocent people. That's why Muhammad says he's speaking out. Taking his kid out the car, four-year-old kid out the car. Out after surviving a shooting earlier this week. Physically, I'm well, but emotionally and mentally, you will never get over that, especially when it involves children. That young child, his four-year-old son, who he was dropping off at his mom's house. Muhammad says he parked a bit further away than usual, never expecting what would happen next. Before I can get two feet out of the car uh, and was standing up, it was just a barrage of gunfire. It wasn't semi-automatic gunfire. It was literally just automatic. The security and public safety professional says it wasn't only his training that kicked into gear, but his instincts to protect what matters most to him. Muhammad says at six foot eight, he tried to stay low and use his body to shield his son and was hit in the buttocks in the process. The training is where is it coming from? But then your secondary mind comes in you need to get to your son. The bullet ended up lodged in Muhammad's thigh, but doctors were able to get it out. The 45-year-old was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center, where he spoke with WGN from his hospital bed Tuesday. He's sharing his gratitude for the officers who rushed to his side, providing aid and helping his young son get to safety. If I had to use the word hero, they were the real heroes. He's also thanking medical... Look what it takes for niggas to appreciate police. It takes literally facing death for sons to appreciate police. Hit one if you notice that. It takes near death situations and it gotta be like in the heat of it. They gotta be in the hospital or it gotta be like moments or days after. It can't, you can't talk to them a week after the shit happened. You gotta talk to them like right when that shit happened. And they appreciate police. Rush to his side, providing aid and helping his young son get to safety. If I had to use the word hero, they were the real heroes. He's also thanking medical staff at the hospital and those who responded to the scene. As Muhammad recovers from his injuries, his number one goal is to make sure his little boy is okay emotionally and mentally. I hope that this interview can just show a light of what we're dealing with here in Chicago. Now, here's the thing, man. I know this brother, he said he's a safety professional. He has a job in Chicago. And the mom, the, the kid's mom lives in a neighborhood where this type of shit happens. <laughs> the kid's mom lives in the type of neighborhood where this, so he, this is joint custody. This seems like a joint custody situation. 70th and Clyde Avenue. Somebody from Chicago, tell me what that's about. 70th and Clyde. The mom could be the streets or oh, the southeast side. Yikes. The mom could be the streets or she could be. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about, JL. Like, yo, I would be thinking, yo, bitch, you fucking rat whore, bitch. You want to live in a fucking ghetto? Fuck you. Live in a ghetto by yourself. I'm taking my fucking son, you fucking rat fucking bitch whore, you. I would be pissed, man. <laughs> You fucking scumbag slut bitch whore you. I ain't taking my kid around here no more. Cause you know she she fine with this shit. You know the, the baby mama fine. She this is like a this ain't even a blip on her. <laughs> the kid didn't get shot. Think about it. The kid didn't get shot. 
the kid didn't get shot. Think about that. The kid didn't get shot. So this is like, this is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing. The kid didn't get shot. This is nothing to her. No, nah, man, if I had to fucking take a bullet in the ass to shield my fucking kid, when I'm dropping them off at your fucking house, Yeah, man. Nah, man. Fuck that, man. Nah, I'm not saying... Listen, I will be... Listen, man. You think... Look at this dude, man. These pictures with his son, man. You could tell he loved the shit out there, boy, man. He proud. He like, he like, yeah, this my boy. This my boy. This my son. This my boy. Yeah, this my son. Yeah, this is my son. You know what I'm saying? My son, my son, my son. Shit, man. Shout out to Stana, man. Hope you got your mic fixed, man. Oh, my God, man. Whew. Had to use the word hero. They were the real heroes. He's also thanking medical staff at the hospital and those who responded to the scene. As Muhammad recovers from his injuries, his number one goal is to make sure his little boy is okay emotionally and mentally. I hope that this interview can just show a light of what we're dealing with here in Chicago. Police say no one is in custody in connection with this incident, and Area 1 detectives continue to investigate it. No one in custody. <laughs> The fact that sons can talk about the criminal justice system, the gliders, the maj a glider can't fucking, listen, a glider can't argue with a son without getting fucking, <laughs> losing everything. If you're a fucking glider and you argue with a son publicly, you're fucking screwed. Sons shoot people all day long in every city, and there's never anybody in fucking custody. As always, they ask anybody with information to reach out. You can always submit a tip anonymously. Reporting.